What up, guys? My name is uh, Chinadu Yunaka, and my memories are, uh, they're valid. They happened. You know what I mean? They, they, they pass, but uh, good times. Are you trying to convince yourself? <laughs> <laughs> you had a big head. <laughs> we had a big head. What? A she torn. sees money all around me. I feel uh. like I'm the man. Do, 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 do. Yes, yeah, say that. Slate. <laughs> what is up to yeah. all the colleagues out there? It's the real slate. Thank all you. 300 million of you, every single American. A couple of Australian yeah. listeners, too. Uh, this is your co-host, Sam Salem. Yeah. And to my left, the screen's right, is the biggest of bros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Deacon Dan, a.k.a. Lil Dan Dan, a.k.a. Yeah. number 46 in your programs, yeah. number one in your heart. Danny Sellers. Yeah, Mr. Thighs out. Yeah, got that. Been at the beach all day yesterday vibing, brother. A little bit of, I think my chest might be actually a little burnt, bro. A little sunburn? A little, yeah, a little something, something. But you know how I get down. I'm in the beach all summer, dog. What, fucking wasting my oh. stressors away. Cussing early. Yeah. Tisk, tisk, tisk. A minute in. I'm sorry. You know. You know we're a little we're a little rock and roll sometimes. What can we yeah, say? Yes. Yeah, uh, smacked off of uh, alkaline water. You know we. Yeah, that. drinking that alkaline water. I got the. Uh, I hate all you. I all you sharing the Sunday scaries memes and yeah. slams laptops shut. I'm over. Stop doing that stuff. But yeah. I will say, I got. It's we're recording on a Sunday. I got school tomorrow and. Uh, Anxiety's back. I don't know what these kids are gonna bully me, <laughs> bully me with. You know, you should honestly, bro. The next time time a kid says something, to you, you should just start crying in front of the. Family. Yeah, I should just make them feel really bad. Well, I know what's crazy is <laughs> last episode we talked about how a kid said to me, just, "You ain't special." And today, at church, one of the elders from my church, Doctor Goodlow, shout out. Yeah. Great man, they, they quarterback at New Mexico, born and raised in Compton. He comes up to me. He's like. Hey, you ain't special. Ain't that what the kids telling you? And oh. I'm like, bro, it's made its way to church now. Yeah, church it's, tea gossip. <laughs> it's gossip. made its way to church now. Um, speaking yeah. of gossip, yeah, I am. Um, it's not even gossip. I, I put up a poll debates on the callbacks Instagram. If you're not following at callback spot, go follow. Please do. Uh, I was just bored trying to get engagement, so I said, who would win in an 800 meter race? Me or Danny? And I put up our little college photos yeah. and overwhelmingly well the three options it was me you or they'd both tear their <laughs> hamstrings while Danny's. doing it which overwhelmingly people pick that disrespectful and then danny got double the amount of votes as me also disrespectful african-american <laughs> yeah also just kind of racism <laughs> yeah. they're just like obviously the black man will win but uh yeah i'm not i'm not kenyan or ethiopian so i don't know if i'd actually win the 800 but um sam we're debating about you running a 400. All right, listeners, look. This dude, all right, delusional. You just saw Kevin Hart pull his fucking hip flexors last month. He's in a wheelchair right now trying to race a, a former NFL running back. Yes. Yeah. All right. But I will say, yeah, if, for those of you that didn't see, Kevin Hart was keeping up with the NFL dude. Yeah, sure. For a set, for, yeah, I mean, in a 30 yard dash, how yeah. much further are you going to separate okay. somebody? Okay, okay. Anyways, Sam on this beautiful Sunday, God's given us. Before we recorded, told me <laughs> that he can right now run a four hundred meter dash under sixty seconds. I I said I have a shot at getting it. First Brother, off, you, you and don't then have you a shot. and I said I'm a hundred percent getting it in under sixty five seconds. And you said I would be lucky to break seventy seconds. Yes, and that's a minute and ten seconds, bro. Yes, four, and four one time around the track. See, so yeah, for listeners, one time around the track, you got to realize a uh, a. Uh, a really fast, like, freshman is running, like, a 12-second, under a 12-second 100 in the in 100 meter. So that times four, like, a, like a not, like, it's not, like, a 11.9-second 11, 11 100-meter dash is, like, slow, sure. But, like, in a high school meet, that's what 80% of the kids are running in, like, a, a high school track meet. So times that by four... I just genuinely don't think, brother, you're going to get... Okay, but this is what I'm saying. My older sister, she was in high school, a state 400-meter yeah. tr runner. Okay. State 4x4. Four four. And she ran it too. And she ran it in like 59 seconds. And she was a, was a, a prime training athlete. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm limber. running it for sure in 59 seconds. I'm saying me, sure, I'm a little washed, 31-year-old man. Me versus my sister when the, she was the, 17 yeah. years old. The, uh, bro, 17-year-old Danny Wright will probably, other than pure chest-to-chest -chest 
physical combat. 17 year old Danny would wash 31 year old Danny. What are you talking about, bro? I'm just division saying. one senior year, division one athlete Danny, no injuries, hips. I don't. Okay, we're gonna have to big just balls. Get to, I would. We're gonna have to get to a track and strong run squatting three hundred something pounds all the time. I can kind of understand a little bit how you think uh, sub sixty is a little, a, a little uh, oh eyes are bigger than my stomach. But to to say I, it would be tough for me to break seventy seconds. I mean, it, I, tough maybe isn't the. The bet, but it's realistic. That's like it that's would be, the benchmark. You'd be, I would be that's a good the over job. and under for me. If I ran sixty eight seconds, you'd be like, "Wow, you did a good job." Yeah, that's the over. You'd and be under. impressed for you. Is seventy seconds? Let me take a, is the over and under I, for you. Look, well, when for I used to coach, them. when I used to coach delusional Orange County private school kids, let me take a saying out of their book. I'm built different. <laughs> yeah, you yeah you built yeah you built different. That's why you're not gonna run a fucking <laughs> a sixty second four hundred. Okay, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to make this some content. Anyways, I stake it. I stake it. I'm going sub sixty five seconds easy. Probably sub sixty. Let us know in the comments right now how fast do you think Sam can run a four hundred meter dash. One time around the track. One time around the track off of like just his regular workout routine right now. Let us know. I just saw oh, you man. eat a burger at eleven o'clock. <laughs> After a show we did, that's just, it, it was a sourdough patty melt. Actually. Exactly, yeah, exactly. That's not that's not conducive that's to your lifestyle. Um, all right. Well, what's your what's your mental health on these days? This is our our trademark Danny Sellers mental health check. Little babies, if when you listen to this, I would have just shot my very first self produced comedy special last Woo! night. Okay, King. Okay, biggest of bros. Yeah, with my dog Sam doing the show with me as well. Um, my my mental health. It was, it's, it's, it's chaotic. My mental health kind of feels like a nice, good pot of greens. It's just stewing. I don't know if the greens going to be good or not. It's my first time a doing A pot it. of greens? Yeah, like black green, black people greens. Like collard greens? Yes. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I need a black co-host. I've never heard the saying, a pot, a pot of greens. What do you mean? Is that the whitest thing I've said? It's one of them. What do you mean? That's what we call them. We don't call them collard greens. not the police. You hey, have you guys heard of any collard greens being cooked? Like that's <laughs> we don't call it but collard just a greens. pot of greens. Yeah, dog. Our mental health is is stewing. It's like a nice little neck bone, you know, turkey neck. Well, my mental health is like collard greens. <laughs> I feel like an undercover cop. Yeah, you definitely. That's that's what you sound like. Is that the whitest thing about? What's the whitest thing about me then? Your skin color. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man, I don't know, man. I'm excited, dog. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm anxious. I feel like if this goes well, I'm going to be a psychopath because I feel like it has the potential to be a really dope project. Yeah. So make sure uh, you're staying tapped in on Danny's Instagram at follow sellers and all. Yeah. We'll be shouting out on the podcast, linking it, but yeah. uh, just shooting it tomorrow. It'll be obviously a little bit to edit and put together, but you're yeah. going to want to stay tapped in yeah. to when that releases. You'll see pictures and stuff. But yeah, man, I don't know. This is an exciting time. I'm excited to talk to our guest, too, a uh, funny comedian of uh, same fraternity as well. You don't know about you know fraternity he's in? Uh, that we're both yeah, in? of course. You gonna say it now? You gonna wait till you? Oh no! I'll let him. I don't want to be rude. <laughs> you know, never say another man's fraternity. That's what. That's you know. Got gotcha. you. Well, but uh, yeah, let's get to out. it. Oh, uh, you said it at the same time. I said thighs out. Then you say let's get to it. I want to say thighs out. Yeah, I was saying it. like let's get to your thighs. Oh, okay. I'm well. physically attracted to you. <laughs> Sam, you can't say it. it's just us two in the room. You can't. <laughs> yeah. My All right. Are we doing now? Oh yeah, cut. Now, we and, and we it are Sam. Sorry, I broke. <laughs> <laughs> and we back. Let's back. get let's get an official intro. Like we finally got a black do. man on the pod. It's been a minute, Sam. I had to fight Sam a lot on this. Man, <laughs> black people. Okay, on. I'm just gonna ignore all of that and get right into our intro. Our guest today. Keep that, keep that Denisha. Thank you. <laughs> our guest today is an actor, writer, comedian, and former Los Angeles public school teacher. And black. As an actor, he can be seen in shows like Abbott Elementary, The Mindy Project, and Insecure, as well as in movies like the LeBron James produced House Party, mm, or the under security guard, you look, yeah, man, you know, or the security. underground cult classic Shake Weight the Movie. <laughs> yeah. As a stand-up, he is currently touring theaters and comedy clubs throughout the country, and was named one of Time Out's comedians to watch. We are utterly exhilarated to welcome to the pod today, former member of the UC Santa Barbara women's basketball practice squad. Yeah. 
Son of a mother who texts, she laughs instead of LOL. Damn. <laughs> and somebody whose self-confidence has come a long way since the days as a kid where he didn't play football out of fear. His head was too big for the helmet. True. Shouldn't do knock everybody. Hey. Uh, Unless you're a Starbucks barista, then he goes by Chris. There we go. Hey, I, <laughs> really? first time I ever heard intro mixed with the bio and the jokes. I like Yeah, that. yeah. He's good. You know what I mean? That's his thing. That's, 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 that's Sam got a good style. <laughs> good, good intro style. I'm trying to, you know, bring my... Carry my weight, I guess. Danny, yeah, I Danny does a, a lot of the heavy I lifting. Had a big head, man. That's, I, grew, I grew into it though. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, Damn. finally, <laughs> I feel big jackets. I, is, I feel seen. Came in around tenth grade. I was like, Ooh, you love. <laughs> <laughs> dude. I, that's the big head thing is so funny because when I was, I think six, my dad's a big Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and they were like in the Super Bowl. I think around then. Uh-huh. And he's like, you don't have a Pittsburgh Steelers hat? We need to get you your first Steelers hat. And we went. I was six years old, and none of the kids' sizes fit me. I had to get an adult size hat Seven as a six-year-old. Half. Half. It's a hard, you know, realization when you realize your head is a little it. bit larger than uh, the average kid. But luckily, my homeboy Arthur, man, he came to high school. That was a blessing. He went to the same high school, and he had a Big. bigger head than mine. <laughs> And it wasn't like my head big, but it's like it's an even yeah. circle. Yeah, you yeah. know, his was like had it was a polygon. <laughs> it's a all dodecahedron the, head. All the big head attention just but, transferred over. Right, because it's funny because like it's like when a, it's, they roasting you, it's like oh well, I know you ain't laughing, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 but look, look, you know, I never went down that route, man. Because sometimes you'll see that you'll see like a fatter person make yeah. fun of the other lesser fatter person because they got all the good jokes. Yeah. I like. I never went down that route. When when I'm, a bigger head took the attention, I I never I never joined in. Oh, uh, yeah. see, I can't. I cannot. You're a bigger man than I. Because as soon as there was someone with a bigger head than me to make fun of, because you know, like the hat, especially that was the lids era. Like you know, yeah, for me, right. like the, I was in high school. Like uh, I graduated 2011. So like t- 2009. Like that's you know you're wearing your fitted hat. And so everyone's looking at hat sizes, and and right. and so I wear like a seven and a half, which mm-hmm. is pretty big. Yeah, but it's, yeah, but I wear a seven and a half too. Oh, yeah. yeah, you got it. You got it done for sure. And and <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, I'm, like, I'm like seven three quarters. I'm not going. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, so honestly, my friend was like seven and three quarters. I'm like, see, he does got a bigger head, and I tried to move yeah. all the. So he started getting seven and a half and stretching them out them, yeah. to make them fit. He's like, no, I wear a seven and a half too, guys. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, like, come on, bro, don't don't. Yeah. My shit got smaller when I. Played in what? college. Your head got <laughs> yeah, smaller? Yeah, bro. That seems like a medical issue. Yeah, you No, but, but when you, you ain't play, you drinking a lot of, you know, sodium and shit and, like, playing football. My head, I used to be a seven and five eighths. Yeah. And then I went and bought a fitted last week. I'm seven and a half now. That like, could be true, though, because your head is mostly water. It's yeah, a lot like, of water. think about, like, less hair mm-hmm. and then just, like, your... I don't know something about you. you. Could shape a baby's head too. <laughs> you could like push it in, do whatever. You know, that's why you see some babies. That's why I got the biggest flat <laughs> spot. I got the biggest flat spot on the back. That's probably my. Oh uh, yeah, now your mom. My dad always trying to like pray over me, anoint me with oil, just pushing the head, <laughs> <laughs> pushing the head down. Your mom like so easily flat around too much. <laughs> Demon child. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get into our favorite segment, save the date. Mm-hmm. Thanks for doing the show too. Uh, I yeah. know, man. No worries. Thank you Appreciate for you. thank you, thank you for being yeah, here. Cool dudes. I like, why not, man? I pulled um, so August 9th, 2009. 2009. Do you know what you're doing at this time? <sighs> August 9th, 2009. What was 2009? August 9th? <laughs> My name was Keisha. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I There's blood started, everywhere. <laughs> Did I start teaching that? Yeah, say that. Like a murder, not like... Yeah, that's not good either. Oh, okay. It's I'll like, not it. like a period, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like a brutal murder. <laughs> <laughs> you made it worse. Yeah, people yeah, get more yeah. offended by sexual stuff than, or the, they get more, people get more offended by a female's body working properly than they do about a gruesome murder. <laughs> so I'm just that trying to. Yeah, that sorry, is. I don't know where the line is, though, boy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm sorry, the other day. Anyway, so this is, this is at least, hey, we're getting articles written up. Yeah. That th- one of three LA Unified School District alums lands a spot in the esteemed Teach for America program. Oh, yeah. Shout out to TFA, man. I feel like all the fine girls from college got into TFA. Yeah, yeah. A lot of fine ladies. A lot ladies. of fine ladies, man. You heard of Teach for America? You know Teach for America. I mean, I know what it is. I didn't do it, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's, it's not mandatory. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> well, so I, I think it, this is, so you went to UC Santa Barbara, mm-hmm. and you realize you get the you get the itch for stand-up uh, comedy, mm-hmm. and you're just like, okay, I don't know what to do, but I know if I can be in, 
LA, Chicago, or New York. Yeah, I'm good. And so that's why you did Teach for America because you're like, I'll just be in one of those cities and be able to pursue. Yeah, I didn't really, I knew I wanted to like pursue entertainment, didn't really know how to go about it. Um, but also like I had a lot of desires and things I wanted to do and like, you know, you know, being a service environment was one of them. Like my mom and dad are both social workers. Yeah. I, I studied sociology, minor education. I thought I might be a lawyer or something of, of, of that nature. So when I saw TFA, just kind of promoting her stuff in the quad, I was like, I'll apply, see what's up. Mm -hmm. So applied to there. Then like, yeah, they had that indication where, you know, do you, is the location the most important to you? What you teach? Or I think it was what grade you teach. For me, the location was most important. Because long as I was in LA, Chicago, or New York, in my head, I was like the best stand-up cities. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll be willing to to go that route. So they put me back in LA. I was like, cool. So that's how I ended up. Yeah. Educational system. Mm -hmm. And you, because you Harbor City, right? Born and raised LA boy. Yeah. Born in South Central, raised Harbor City. Yep. Nice. Yep. 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 You no. Know, number twenty-one in the basketball programs. Number one in our hearts. Yeah. Some of this is not no internet, man. Where you get this? <laughs> <laughs> how you know my jersey? He, he, was like, he was in South Central, <laughs> South Central last night. Flag people yeah, there. Like, yeah. <laughs> Hey, you know, Jim? Oh, yeah, man, it was 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, number 21. Um, Why well, I choose that number? I think it was Kevin Garnett. Oh, big ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah big that's ticket, prime. man. You know, a little trash talker, man. So, yeah, that was a good time, man, playing basketball. I should, probably should have played football, but, you know, the whole helmet thing, man. But. <laughs> that, that, that's true, though. Like, you're like, uh, the that helmet ass, don't That fit. went through my head. I was like, you know, I'm not going to do this. Because I didn't come up playing football. I came up playing flag football. And I was like a natural quarterback. So yeah. even on the basketball court, like I love passing. It comes like, just, you know, it comes easy to me. Uh -huh. But uh, I was like, nah, man, I'm good. I'm not going to put this Did on. you ever think about playing in college or like, I feel like you were able college to? College hoop? Yeah. Nah, because I was playing out of position. Uh, I wasn't yeah. selfish enough in high school, yeah. if that makes sense. You know, you really got to think about yourself in high school um, until you get that scholarship. So. Well, like they had you playing like the post just because yeah, you're strong and like exactly you know classic like over six, six foot, foot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I took you know I took I took pride in defense. So right. No matter how uh, big you are, I want yeah. you know what I mean. So I was just was what the team needed, not what I needed. Yeah. Pat Bev, talk yeah, to you. <laughs> exactly. My point guard, you know, he's five three. He was great, um, Huey Golson. But uh, so yeah, I ended up playing like bigger positions than I should. I'm Steph yeah, Curry yeah. height, I'm right? Playing a four. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guess, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, that's so crazy. Like what, is, what is UC Santa Barbara like? I feel like it seems like such a cool white girl school. Was it like? Was it like? Is it niggas in Santa? Like, what's the vibe? Like, yeah, it's what's not the community. It's not, like, it's not that Sorry. that many minorities. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? I didn't mean uh, to say like that. But we we we're out there, man. The black population when I was there, I think was like two point five, two point three percent. That's how Elon was running the school. It was like yeah, very. It was a football team. Like Literally. Shooting guards in the basketball team yeah. and like just random black people that just like, yeah. I guess I'll yeah, be that includes the sports. Facts. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't have a football team though. Yeah, right. So that dropped oh, the number. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Something happened with what's, what's the, it was like a sport law. Title like, Nine? Yeah, Title yeah. Nine. So that's what the football team got kicked to balance out the numbers. Oh, that's between males. Yeah, because scholarships, instead of just upping the women's sports, they're just like, man, I'll just take yeah, away yeah, football, exactly. which yeah. is crazy. Yeah, football team sucks here. Let's just cancel that. Yeah, yeah. I happened to Hofstra when I was uh, playing too, similar. They had a football team. They just canceled it. That's wild. So uh, did you pledge Alpha at UC Santa Barbara? Yeah, yep. So was it was like a big chapter? Alpha is a fraternity. I'm also in it as well. Yep. Uh, was it a big chapter? Was it small? Like It was small. We only had like four people on my line. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, the biggest line they ever crossed through there was, it's always around like eight or 10. Yeah. We'll have those every now and then. That's like a huge line. Even four is like a like, oh, that's solid, solid yeah, number. Yeah, same. So yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we cross around there. And just the Santa Barbara in general was just, it's just a peaceful ass city. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? A lot of wine tasting rooms. Yeah, and I was used to like white folks, but I never met white folks and never met black folks. Yes, but I was my. That's a different type. Like of, Sam. Yeah, yeah, man. So yeah. Shut up. <laughs> well, no, because like Harbor, Harbor. Sam got it down, down. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it took him a second. <laughs> Like step back, you know. like a new dog. You know, your new puppy got to, you know, pull, take him to the outside. Okay, yeah, yeah run around. <laughs> His face. This podcast is just to prove that I have a black friend. So yeah, we got yeah, we had about eight a row of white men. So we back, we got yeah, black folk back. Yeah, yeah so so that was that was different. But um, but it, it was it was so that was like really fun just yeah. to like navigate all that and you know people learn from me, I learn from them. Uh, so yeah, no, nah, but UCSB is a great great place to go to school, man. But you got to be focused, though, for real. Yeah. There's something to do every single night. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, it's crazy. Just know. like like bars and just like bars, bars parties. parties uh, Del Playa is like the main party street. Oh. There's a house parties going on all the time. You And the culture is literally you can just walk in. You don't have to know nobody. And they're like, yo, what's up, man? And you're just And good. were you doing like creative stuff at that point at all or you just more so focused on school? Uh, I was like, in high school, I used to write poetry, right? And do some like some music. This motherfucker got feelings. Yeah, yeah, man. I be feeling, man. <laughs> you know, got emotions, bro. Yeah, so now nah. when I got to uh, when I got to college, my frat brother actually before we pledged together, we were actually like best friends already. Yeah, uh, my boy Ivan, and um, he lived next door to me. He was from Crenshaw High. He used to rap. Okay, and he was really, really like he's really, really good. And so he was like, he read some of my poetry. Like, bro, this is dope, man. Like, we, should, we can make a rap group. I was like, yeah, whatever, man. So we make this rap group. And me, him, my boy, Chris Carly, and uh, Josh Dawson. And so we was like opening it up for like the concerts on campus and stuff. Uh, it was like yeah, crazy yeah, stuff, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that was like our, our intro. And how I got into stand-up, Ivan's roommate, Dion, used to always try to put the idea in my head that I should do stand-up. Because a lot of my raps were like funny and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then uh, one day we were doing a talent show. We finished doing our music. And our homegirl, Cindy, was on stage. She was like bombing. <laughs> like crazy um, I didn't know Obama was But I knew this wasn't good yeah. <laughs> And so But, I don't know, but, but, <laughs> but Awkward Moments is funny to me So I'm Me and Dion We crying laughing It's just so quiet It's yeah. so funny to me So I'm crying And then she got I think she took me laughing As offensive She's like Oh well Chino You think you funny Why don't you come up here <laughs> So uh, I'm thinking I'm helping her You know yeah. uh, So so Dion next to me He makes you Get up there You're a bitch man. I was like, I'm like Whatever man So I get up there I'm, t- I'm still off the high Of our music performance I'm like fuck it yeah. I walk on stage yeah, post, post performance adrenaline yeah, yeah, it's for like real, literally, bro. Through, so I was yeah. like, whatever, man. I walk on stage. No, I, you know, I had no jokes playing. I just remember saying, um, what I say to them? I was like, yo, uh, I was like, one more time for Cindy. I was like, yo, it's Mother's Day weekend. Remember where my mother's at? And then nobody clapped. I'm like, good, we in college, you horse. Yeah. That's <laughs> so, <laughs> all you need. Is it was, little, yeah. yeah, it was like a big ass laugh, bro. Yeah. I was like, good night. Yeah, <laughs> especially in the moment, too. I mean, if you're coming yeah. up with something like that in the I moment. I had no plan, man. It just came out and, um, I just remember that that little feeling, and then that's what kind of got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. So so fast forward and similar backgrounds, both like education, the education to comedy pipeline. You were teaching special needs students or students with special needs. Yeah, students with special needs. Yeah, mouth to moderate. Mm-hmm. Nice. So what? I guess just yeah. What like what was what was your day to day like? Because I know it can be a grind going from like okay, I'm being responsible for people's kids yeah. and their growth, and then going out to all of a sudden like you know let me nurture an environment that is conducive to student learning, and then it's yeah. like okay, let me go to the laugh factory where it's like some of the most decrepit mm. people. Mm. So yeah, what was just that life like? And I know you big time actor too, so like mm. auditions and all that. What was that like balancing? Yeah, man. That? Initially, I was just balancing stand up and teaching, and it was exhausting because I genuinely cared about being a great teacher. You know what I mean? And so, Could never be me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I got, like, I, no, no, no. Well, you, you know, you're kidding. But no, nah, I, I truly, truly cared uh, about that challenge in front of me, man. Because, um, you know, I'm teaching students that are from the city I'm from, man. So I'm trying to give them yeah. my all. And uh, so that was exhausting in itself because a lot of students, you know, though, if you give, they're going to take because they need it. 100%. Um, so so that, that was killer. But it also, like, kind of taught me the grind as well during that time because I would like talk to my friends that was just doing comedy yeah you know? social media was like it like wasn't as big yet and a lot of them was kind of like fucking off the time that I was at the, at the job mm-hmm. so my head's like yo let me just make this money and you know and then wow and it just made me more cognizant of time tomorrow I'm always thinking about what I'm doing my time right versus just like just doing nothing yeah it's existing and, right? yeah not for sure so 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 that was that was dope I think also being a teacher I think it made me a better stand up you know, because yeah. I think, you know, in order to have kids behave in behavioral management, I think being like the most entertaining thing in the room is, um, you know, it's a, it's a way to go about it. Yeah. Right. So I used to just be very engaging in front of my students, which helped me uh, on the stage as well. And then you maybe got tested to Sam, like using, I'd be using my teacher stare on <laughs> while I'm telling jokes. You know what I mean? So like I'm doing jokes, I'm seeing somebody kind of like doing too much table talk right. without just directly acknowledging it. I'll just kind of look at them so they know that I see what you're doing That's and they incredible. have to stop. And like it literally works. Like, you know what I mean? So it's only I'm controlling the crowd without even saying Taking your sometimes. classroom management skills literally, to, bro, to, the, to the stage. Yeah. 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 Well, especially, um, yeah, if you can, if you can face like 
15 year olds 15 year olds are mean like if you can handle them you can handle any sort of heckler uh at all what like what what were the any roasts from students that stick out and did you ever like in a playful way you know go back at them a little bit yeah man i'm trying to think um the kids are mean they used to make fun of one of my one students because he had like an arm that wouldn't like move you know what i mean so they used to call him raptor and things like that. Danny, don't you start. <laughs> nah, it's cool. It's cool. Don't you start. It, it was uh, high school. She was going to cut the other angle. You nah, but it was high school. So I used to like help him <laughs> to combat the bullying because, you know, you got to fight fire with fire. I used to write him jokes. Like, yo, say this to him. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll hit you were him. writing jokes because they him. wouldn't stop. Ghost writing, bro. Yeah. Really, bro? Because <laughs> yeah. they wouldn't stop. Yeah. So I was like, yo, man, yo, stop it, man. Stop yeah. calling him that. So they kept doing like, all right. So I like, yo, me talk to me after class. So I'm like, here, man, <laughs> say this to him. And like, but and wait. it's all the stuff you want to get off your chest about some of those <laughs> yeah, kids, right? anyways. Yeah, I, mean, I like, we would practice. I like practice it because like, I know matters. you're broke ass. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like practice it. The mirror, it, right? I like Jay, practice it with me, man. So it was like, <laughs> I like a little bit, little less. Yo, huh? mama is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. I think you found the only way to roast kids and get it off your chest in a totally wholesome way. You're like taking <laughs> yeah. a, kid under, a kid in need under your wing and being like, literally, buddy. man. I'm like, bro, because, you know, BTs is no fun. So I was like, yo, this, say this. Yeah. I like, make sure there's a crowd. <laughs> yeah. It has to be a crowd. It can't be one on one because people got to see it. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, so he was out there giving people nick nicknames that would stick for life. Oh. <laughs> no. And so people, they just stop messing with him. They like, yo, Jamal, we don't know where you get these bars from. <laughs> You just in the corners like, yeah. yeah like, leave the ball alone. Man. Yeah. That's funny. That boy, nah, he quit Miller and <laughs> Rose is crazy. <laughs> I literally just ghostwrite his dudes, uh, you know? That's yeah. Yeah. Is it true you used to like start open or uh, start lesson plans by just riffing and basically like practicing on your crowd work a little bit with Yeah, students? yeah, man. I would like start my class off just kind of like riffing with them. Yeah. It's because, you know, they're coming in for so much energy from lunch or something like that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, or yeah. So, another teacher that wasn't maybe good at classroom management, so they had a blast out there. But in my class, I don't play that. But you got to meet them where they're at, right? So I'll, I'll just start off with some laughter, blah, 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 blah. Oh, just, you know, oh, where your pencil? You ain't got your pencil. Whatever. We used to that. Da, 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 da. Everybody laughing. Cool. All right, simmer down. And then we get to it. You know? Yeah, that's got to be. I'm, I was thinking about this. I think one of Sam's stories, uh, just reminiscing on high school and like, it's it is crazy because you're all, all these kids coming from different spots and then they're coming together. Some, one person might have just got in a fight or cut somebody out or yeah. smoked some weed or whatever. It's like they all coming back in the room. You got to lock them in for 45 minutes. Yeah. That's, that's I really don't know how y'all teach because I would, I would, I could do it, bro. Yeah, it's tough because what I was doing too is like I'm teaching them. You know, they're, you know, they're students with special needs, but they're also mountain to moderate. So yeah, yeah. a lot of people on campus don't know oh, right. that they have, like, you know, these learning disabilities. So it's a fine balance of putting confidence in them yeah. and just, like, owning it, but then also protecting what they're dealing with from other students who yeah. might not understand it, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So, like, we had, like, a star basketball player was, you know, yeah. in my class. He was like, yeah, you mind if I come in late? It's Cause I don't want people walk, see me walking in the room. I'm like, bro, whatever you need, it's all good, man. But yeah. five minutes, you know, pull up. Like, all right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> people asking you, hey, yo, why is what's the name of your room? I'm like, oh, he's a, you know, he like, can you tell him I'm a teacher aide. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, teacher aide, you know. So, <laughs> so, you know, you gotta, yeah, it was, it was. But it that was, makes a huge difference. You have to navigate for sure. Yeah, that makes yeah. a huge difference to those kids, like a thousand percent. I mean, like we're talking, we're all kids, like you, <laughs> not playing football. Cause like, what if the helmet doesn't fit? I don't want to get roasted. Yeah. I remember like. Being worried about like, oh, what if, yeah, like football, like I don't want to go to the football team because they lift so much and like if I'm the, if I have the least amount of weight on the mm -hmm. bench press, like that's embarrassing. Like as a kid, you just have those like mm, those silly stupid, knots and there's yeah. so many teachers that are so legalistic. They're like, no, get in the room. And you're like right. ruining a kid's life. Thank you. And it's like, if you, if I, what is, okay, five minutes. It's is that really going to make, it's not, it's going to change yeah. his life. This is my crowd work. It's not, we're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. That's incredible. No, nah, no, nah, that's, that's so true. I think, uh, you know. I always try to put myself in the minds of the students. Same thing with the, with the audience, right? Like, uh, as a stand-up, one thing I love doing, I think that helped me improve was, like, when I watch stand-up shows, I will pay attention to how I feel in that moment, right? Because I could be enjoying a show and not laughing. Mm -hmm. Like, genuinely enjoying a show and not laughing. And that made me be less, you know, offended if someone isn't laughing out loud at yeah. my jokes. Yeah. 
Uh, because you can have 98% of the crowd, but you still notice that 2% percent is kind of stone faced. Right. You know? Uh so I think I think that's just kind of helps with, with all that. Like even with like the big head stuff, I remember one time uh I was prom king, right? In my high school. Didn't want to run, but they like kind of voted me in to run. Mm -hmm. Ended up winning. But I didn't, the reason I don't want to win, because I didn't want to put the try to put the crown on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ain't no way. <laughs> A little yarmulke. You know what I mean? <laughs> These fittings would give. <laughs> you know what I mean? Metal ain't about to, there's no way, right? That's hilarious. So prime night, me and my homegirl, Danielle, we on stage, and I see Mr. Donahoe, our principal. He's walking over to two crowns. I'm like eyeballing it. I'm like, this shit ain't going to fit. <laughs> so <he was> like, <laughs> <laughs> he, put, he put on Danielle's head, right? Danielle put hers on. He tried to put on mine. I grabbed it from his hand. I'm like, I'm like, think, Chin, think. I just go, tonight, we're all prom king. And I just give it to the first <laughs> dude next to me. I was like, everybody take a picture with the crown. That's incredible. So I want you to tell your son you was a king tonight. And so everybody's like, yeah. <laughs> and they all take pictures with it. And uh, That's hilarious. I did ask. Like, I run into one of the dudes one That's time slick. at a show. I went to my high school. He was like, yo, Chin, you remember? He reminded me of the story. I forgot yeah. about it. He's like, remember that night when you said, tonight, we're all prom king. Like, everybody take a picture with the crown. He's like, bro, it's one of the nicest things anybody's ever done for me. <laughs> And like he has no idea, I did it for myself. Yeah, you're, just, you're just like I just didn't want to get roasted. I went on stage trying to put this damn. You know, what, the, what on the fence? You're in the, here in the back. Oh yeah. Hey, you might need to take over running politics. That's smooth. That's yeah, slick. Man. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm for the people. For the people it's like now nah, I was really yeah. just trying to cover <laughs> myself. It's a tax break is. Yeah. And honestly, it wasn't that serious to me. So I, I didn't really care. Like yeah, you know, yeah. Everybody take yeah. pictures. It's, it's stupid. You know. He was like, "That's the nicest thing anyone ever done for me." And you're like. What's your name again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who are you? Say it. Say it. Say it. You have another Samuel. date for us? Um, well, I, uh, a story that I that I came across that this is okay. This I think as a teacher, there are things that are like truly awful when you look at them outside of school mm -hmm. context, but being it kind of can be the trenches sometimes, just yeah. getting through the school day. And so sometimes there are things that happen that you can't help but laugh, but then as you look at it, you're just like Oh wait, that was super serious. So I know uh apparently one time there's a kid who who stole the stapler from your room and then pretended it was a gun and ran into another class yeah. pretending to hold up the other class down. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> did I, I what? Did, wait, did I tell you this story? Uh, I just keep my ear to the ground, you know. Like, wait, cuz I don't I, I ain't said that on stage. I'm telling you, he really he, he be finding stuff, bro. Yeah, man. Like, you can't must, give him too much of a lead time so if you're going to do the podcast. Yeah. He is more than 48 hours, he's going to find some I think weird I told Sam, I had to tell you that story. Uh, but yeah, that's had one conversation in our life. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm, I met you at a school, actually. Yeah, man. Um, no, that that really happened. It was these twins, actually. They look both look just like Derrick Rose, and they uh, <laughs> are like for our splitting pre images. Pre ACL or yeah, pre ACL <laughs> MVP. And, and they jumped. I mean, they uh, they came to our high school like middle of the year, and they were like you know pretty wild with it. Um, they're like jumping off the walls, all types of stuff. They're in our what this thing called IP was like a proper placement for them. But, you know, we have to figure it out. So it takes a amount of time to kind of give them a chance first. And then one of the students, uh, you know, he was like, hey, Mr. U, man, you mind if I go to the bathroom real quick? And I'm trusting him. Yeah. I'm like, all right, yeah, go ahead, man. And then, you know, you know, get back here within five minutes. Like, oh, I got you. And this was like during the time we just had, it was like, you know, so these shooties happening in schools. Yeah. Know? We just had like this little special meeting for the students and all this stuff. That was like a day before, which I think that's where he got the idea from. <laughs> and then next thing I know, I hear like screaming from like across the hall. You know, and then he's like, he busts back in the room laughing. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what happened? Before he could answer me, another teacher walked in. Like, Devin just came in here with a stapler talking about everybody get down. I'm like, I am so sorry. <laughs> I'm like, bro, you are, that is so you are done. That you is got so to pee in this classroom for the rest of the year because all privileges is lost. Like, That's bro. crazy. Yeah, that was wild. I was like, come on, man. Dude. But you know, you're so desensitized. But it, it, like that is truly awful because I can't imagine what those kids and that teacher are feeling in that. Because they don't really know him too. It's one thing. It's like, all right, <laughs> yeah. we're used to you play like this. You're new to this school, my yeah. guy. There's a lot of kids haven't seen your face yet. Yeah, it really <laughs> so they're just really like, think. yo, yeah. you know what I mean? bro, I couldn't imagine. Like, you That's gotta let traumatic. us warm up, warm up to that. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? second semester, dog. At least we know. And yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm definitely not trying to make light of that yeah, that stature was, that of thing, but it, it like it is just. There are things that, as a teacher, you're just like, bro, if I don't laugh at this, I'm literally going to lose my mind like, sure. and break out in hives all stress. And even stuff like, especially today, I think I hate to be like the that old dude that's just like, oh, kids these days are, but I, there is truth to like, 
I think, you know, the millennial generation was kind of the last one where it was like, if a teacher said you did something at school, parents are just like, why'd you do that? You're in trouble. And now parents are, it seems like eight times, nine times out of 10, they're taking the kid's size no matter oh, what. Really? Yeah. Like uh, there's a kid, I was, I was long-term subbing a class and I, I turn and look and there's a kid who's ripped up, I've talked about on stage, he ripped up his, his worksheet and he's trying to use it as rolling papers stuffing weed in it trying to like Shit, like really roll, like ro it was yeah like it was weed. <laughs> that's crazy. like you could smell it like <laughs> in, in california yeah it's legal yeah, and, yeah, <laughs> yeah but on school yeah, i know i know i know <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know <laughs> he's like you know how we do <laughs> it's hard to imagine how he found it <laughs> <laughs> every re old republican in the midwest here you said that's like, that is how it is out there they are yeah, just right. letting kids smoke like, weed. no we're not no <laughs> and so i I'm a sub, like I've only known these kids for a week and clear, I don't have any power. So I quick like open the door to like get one of the deans that like patrols. And by the time they get back in the room, the kid had like passed it out to a bunch of different students. I don't know what they, you know, they mm, quickly like it. stash it. Yeah, like yeah. for real. <laughs> and so I I go to the dean, I'm like, oh, he had drugs. He's like, oh, okay, well like you could smell. I'm like, no, I literally saw him have weed on his desk try to roll it into paper and try to like make a blunt or a J or what, I don't know the lingo of the wacky tobacco. Man, you know? talk about the lack of respect for subs, man. Uh, no, right, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I can get away with this. Yeah. And like this shit. Cool. And, and the guy was just like, well, if you don't have any proof, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not, I'm not about to deal with these parents. Yeah. I'm like, a, no, like I'm telling you, I like, I'm not, why would uh, I have. Was this like a really big school? It was, um. No, but it was a school. I don't want to say the name of the school, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. same organization that you've worked for. Got you. Word. Same, okay. Yeah. 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 You yeah. know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it was like a, it was like a, it was just like a regular neighborhood high school that got turned into like a yeah. charter, but was still like. He said, if you don't have no evidence, then yeah. nothing I could do. Yeah. And so the kid. Your like, testimony is not, that's, that's yeah. legitimate evidence. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm gonna right. Go. Right. I have nah. no reason to lie. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know this child. I have no nah. grievance yeah. with this child. And but he's just like, no, because if he's like, if I, if I tell, if I tell any of the parents without any picture proof, then it's just going to be a headache for me to deal with a bunch of like angry parents, you know, why they're wasting my time bringing, like kicking my kid out of school. Or well, that's also why the students are feeling comfortable. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. why they do it. Yeah, well, you know, it's crazy. I, um, I was watching that Nick, that's Nick Saban, uh, Urban Meyer, Florida Gators doc Yo, on Netflix. I just started it. It's very I did good. The first up, man. It's crazy. Yeah, the, and I lived in. I had just moved to Jacksonville, Florida, like '04. So like, I remember that I saw Tim Tebow live in high school. Like yeah. all this stuff. So I I was yeah. there the whole time. The whole when they were playing. For all the non sports people, University yeah. of Florida football. They yeah. won some national championships. And like, and this is a documentary on from like '05 to like 2010. They were like the Alabama of that time. Since. Yeah, for the young kids, Tim Tebow. He's, uh, <laughs> Right, Christian football. Jesus, yeah. he would go to third world countries and yeah. circumcise babies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's not even a joke. That yeah. he actually yeah, did. I, that. Wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked. Like, anyway, white Jesus of, of, of college football. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Until he couldn't throw in the NFL. But anyway, uh, Urban Meyer was the coach. Urban Meyer was talking about the same thing. He's like, "Bro, I had this kid, and I, when I first got here, I kicked him off because of team rules." Mm -hmm. And he was like, a year later, he overdosed. I didn't mean to ruin the documentary. I'm sorry, but anyway, no, it's not that big. It's like a small part of the thing. Yeah, I see. But then he said, well, that he like was, that's how it ends. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. right. But then, but then he was saying he was like, so because they were talking about players getting in trouble on the team. He was like, honestly, my the res, the solution for me was never just to kick kids off because that felt like such a cheap. In in like uh, he felt the weight of the dudes. Yeah, overdose not after not that. systemic real way yeah. to fix these kids. Of course. More uh, me keeping them around and, and having someone like you or like him or another coach to help foster them along to their journey is going to help them way more in their life than me just sending them ISS or kicking them out of campus or whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. So, like, I kind of understand administrations a little bit, not just immediately trying to just, I see we, let's kick the kid out. I mean, he should have done something more he than just did right. something. Right. Because right. yeah. there's, 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 there's like two sides of it, right? On yeah. one end, you're one hundred percent right. You can't. It's not about expelling a student, right? But it's also we can't ignore it, facts. Because now it's, it's kind of like yeah. yeah, it's like anywhere else. Even at a workplace, right? right? Adults we're always watching what the other adults at the workplace are doing. One hundred percent. If I see you're allowing Billy D yeah. to come thirty minutes late to work, and there's no consequences for that. Well, guess what? I'm, the same. I'm not gonna come thirty. I'm gonna come twenty five though. Fact. You know, so somebody's gonna try to push it. So the same students, you have students who are. Don't really even have like the confidence to be the the person that leads as disruption. 
Yeah. But they're watching others. If they start, then they will start. Yeah, yeah. So you always got to, like, meet it head on. Right. Expelling for somebody rolling weed in class is definitely not the answer, especially in a state where it's legal. Right. Right. He's probably two years. Was his high school? Yeah. Two years from being able to do it legally. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I'm not about to expel you for that. But we do also got to have some kind of consequence. At the very least, a, a, a detailed, yeah. long conversation. Right. Whatever, whatever. We got to track it. But, you know, teachers get burned out. Admin get burned out. That's what I'm saying in terms of like me when I was doing stand-up and teaching. Yeah. That was the hard part because I genuinely care. Right. Right. So I would like do all the things. If my admin didn't want to do something, I would like, it, it, for me, it's like, yo, this is my classroom. Yeah. So my classroom, you got to, you know, there's certain things we just not going to do here. Right. And if they're not going to give you consequences, well, damn it, I'm going to give you consequences. Yeah. As a sub, that's not your job to be doing, <laughs> right? That's a lot. <laughs> but yeah. I'm just saying someone's going to be here. Yeah. 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 As someone's going to be here every day, I'm not about to let you run over my classroom. Now, you might get away with that elsewhere, but here, like, we're, yeah. not, we're not doing that. Since you're someone who grew up in L.A., Obviously, you weren't teaching at the exact high school that you went to, but did you feel like probably had a better grasp on where kids were coming from? Do you feel like you ever had to teach the other teachers like, hey, man, when they bully you, like quit trying to the harder <laughs> kids. If you try hard in front of a kid, they're going to make fun of you even more for that. Like the more yeah. mad that you get and try to hold on to it, like yeah. they're going to just go down on you. No, nah, for sure. Being being from L.A. was definitely uh, an advantage. Just being, you know, spending time in cities, you know, inner cities, et cetera. Yeah. Um, just being like a person that's always like just paying attention, um, it does help. I have had those conversations with teachers. I had a teacher uh, back in the day. You know, he taught Spanish high school, and you know he walked in my class one time and he saw this child, Brittany, like you know doing her work and paying attention, and she's really really tough. And then we're all after the football game. He was standing next to me. He was like, "How do you get Brittany to behave?" Mm-hmm. I'm like, "You know, just I just kind of meet her where she is, not kind of you know take her where I wanted to be." And he was like, he like let me know. She keeps calling me these things. It's very hurtful. And he like he was getting like teary eye. I like look, I like look, Marina. I'm, I'm gonna tell you straight up. Like Brittany is 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 an asshole. You know what I mean? And um, she don't respect you. And he was like, he was like, don't say that. I was like, bro. I was like she's in eleventh grade. She knows yeah. who she is. I was like, do you know adults who are assholes? She was like, yeah. I was like, well, at one point in time, those adults were kids. Fact. Brittany just know who she is. So you have to meet her where she is. The reason she respects me because. If you disrespect me, I'm going to disrespect you within the law, right? <laughs> like it's going to be, <laughs> I'm gonna you know test the line, yeah. Yeah, I'm, but I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know I'm not going to allow that to happen, right? Yeah. I'm gonna show you I I don't fear that, and so that's what she respects, you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's why I have her respect because she knows I'm not going. There's a line I'm just not gonna let you cross, right. and so he was like, "You just got to put your foot down, and once you mean what you say." And she, you know, she'll 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 follow, but she's gonna test you because she's used to testing people. She gets off on it. Yeah. Right. You know, a lot of people do. They get off on like testing authority, et cetera. And right. once you just show, like, hey man, this is not gonna happen. And then also I do love you, right? Yeah. We have our we're gonna sit down after, we're gonna have a conversation. I'm gonna show you that I did that because I care, but you know, I'm not gonna let you push me around. That's what right. I'm. Yeah. That's uh I mean, like I said, we need more teachers like you. And yeah. it also helps. Oh, go ahead. No, we're finished. I was just gonna say it helps to not be a sub because I have kids that ask me, "Yo, what what car are you drive? I'm gonna be meeting for you. I'm gonna be yeah, waiting yeah. for you after school." And I'm just like, "What? <laughs> what? Right. I'm like, are you telling me to meet That's you outside?" Crazy. I've literally had multiple kids be like, "Meet me outside." I would be like a Jeep Wrangler. I will yeah. beat you. Honestly, over. it's sometimes tough. <laughs> <laughs> yo, you know, I would be like, I would say things. I'm like, "Yo, ain't no cameras in here. You can stay yeah, after school. We could, yo. yeah." What you mean? Yeah, yo. I don't want to <laughs> say too much, but I there are some kids. I, I teach, I'll, especially last year. I was at a I was at a school where there's a lot of kids who gang bang. And yeah. they, but the kids who bang, they are quiet about it. Yeah, the, they they, they show up to school and they just, hey, I don't give anyone problems unless they give me problems, right? Because yeah. they've seen what real life yeah. and real problems look like. It's always the kids who don't gang bang that are the ones like throwing up gang signs, acting like they're about it. Yeah. And so there have been a couple of times where I was like, I dare you to keep the same energy outside these walls. Yeah. They're like, what? <laughs> like, no, keep the keep yeah. the same energy. Like, on, I dare you. Oh, what's up? Come on. Oh, I'm just finish now. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, 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 I think that's that's a part of it, right? I think a lot of it, no matter what, if they bang it or not, I think most kids just they want to see that you see them as a person. You take right. interest into actually who they are yeah. versus just trying to do your job and teach them. They'll they'll come around, you know. Did they'll you ever coach? Uh, yeah, I coached soccer. A right? Bit. Now that was that was like that was a bit. <laughs> but oh, no, they, no, they did ask me coach soccer. I turned it down. Yeah, because I told them I don't, I don't teach soccer. But I could easily say yeah, then took the yeah, money. So that's right. where the that's yeah. where the joke came from. Because they right. asked, like, yo, do you mind coaching a soccer team? 
I'm thinking like, why are you, why are you, I mean, you never see me kicking the ball with these cats. Right. I mean, you always see me out here just hooping with the hoopers. <laughs> yeah, you know what right. I mean? And he so this that, black man to do something. He, yeah, <laughs> he too athletic. Athletic. They, I was like, I was like, I was like, uh, I don't know nothing about soccer. And they was like, no, nah, it's it's cool. <laughs> and like, I was we, like, yeah, we just need someone to babysit. Not, yeah, this that's thing. literally what just it is. We just need them to feel like they have a place. And they knew. Yeah, yeah. I knew it, it's really just about the, just make it safe and let them have fun, right? right? right. But for some kids, they you ask them like, what you want to be? I want to yeah. be a soccer player. Yeah. <laughs> and now you will throw their lives, their yeah, dreams yeah, yeah. just to my hands, you know? Yeah. Like, it's not cool, sir. Yeah, because I'm going to be honest and tell them, like, I don't really know what I'm doing, so yeah, make yeah. sure you have YouTube in on your own. You know what I mean? Right. But most people, most adults, you put that with, you know, they'll be like, all right, this is my team. We're, this is what we're going to, you know? Right. That's really what you run into at some of these high schools. Exactly. That's last day. Yeah, I'll hit you with the last day. This is February 8th, 2023. Very recent. February 8th, 2023. This is... Who was that? My birthday's a third, man. Was that? Well, this isn't when you were there. This is just when it aired. This is the Valentine's Day episode of Abbott Elementary where oh, you word. play Tristan. Yeah. So, um, yeah, obviously you're, you're a successful comic, uh, successful actor out here working. Uh, that show specifically, it's great that that... Sh There's been other shows about schools, but mm -hmm. like... As people who've been in schools, you realize how many insanely funny things. Like, there's so many times where I'm like looking for a camera. Like, this has to be. Oh yeah. Like a prank, and so it's. But it's t it is tough to how do you make a sitcom about it because like the amount of kids that you need or this or that. So it's mm -hmm. cool to see Abbott Elementary one. They've kind of cracked the code. But was it was it kind of like a a little bit of a full circle moment for you of like man I used to be like literally running from school to auditions and now I'm on like the most popular network show that's about yeah that's crazy school. Yeah, no, it was it was definitely um a moment that was that was really cool and special because of my you know, my background in education. Yeah. So no, so that was that was definitely dope. Shout out to the whole uh, Abbott team as well. That was my first time meeting Janelle James actually too, man. Yeah, what Very was funny she, comedian. What was she like in the, a you had some, on the show? You had a couple scenes on that. Yeah, with her, right? scenes with her, man. J Janelle is funny. Electric. She, I never seen her do stand-up till that night. We both did a show at the Improv together. Really? Uh, it was her show. She invited me on it. And I was like, yo, I, I can't believe I never seen her do stand-up. Yeah. And uh, she was telling me too, like, um, like she was kind of overacting as well. Oh, wow. And before she she booked that, I, I think she was telling me she didn't want to do it. She didn't want to like audition for it. Uh, because she was just kind of like burnt out. Acting could burn you out for sure. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot, a lot of rejection. Of, a lot of rejection. You interview for a living, right? Essentially, yeah. You know I mean? So, Man, I think, a, and not even interview for a living. Like, it, okay, if you're if you're the second best accountant, great. You're making good money at mm -hmm. your firm. If you're the exactly. second best person for a role, you're incredible at acting, <laughs> Bro, and baby. you're not Zero dollars. you're not Bro. getting the role. Yeah, so. and you spend a lot of time. Auditioning, callbacks, call back, and, yeah, and, yeah, man. Well, it's, ahead, it's a yeah. lot of time and effort you have to dedicate uh, for essentially. Um, the, the, just for the experience, yeah, <laughs> it's, a lot of, it's a lot of experience, uh, but but it's it's still you know it's it's dope. Um, but yeah, no, no, being on set was great. Just being around you know so many talented people, man, in, in that kind of space. And it was also was fun. I wasn't playing a teacher; I was playing a parent, like mm -hmm. a disgruntled parent. Right. So that was kind of fun to uh, kind of bring some of that out. Some of the experience. Uh, it was a very funny episode, yeah, right? Because yeah. Jacob, the white teacher, is teaching Black History, and you're and you're a parent that's like. Why is this white dude teaching black? Yeah, history? yeah, yeah. You you know, um, you won't you'll see stuff like that where, and I, I would take that parent though over a parent I can't contact. Of, yeah, give, give me the parent that. Oh uh, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Give yeah. me the parent that's in my up my ass. You know what I mean about what their child is doing, what their child is learning, and Fact. I'll take that t ten out of ten times versus a parent like 100. I can't reach and like y'all yeah, talk to you about your absent. son or daughter. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, was it? Um, Along with being a full circle moment, I know your so your parents moved here from Nigeria, mm -hmm. and so was that like it? It seems to be a common theme with like uh, children of parents who immigrated here, where it, like sometimes it, it can be a little tougher, like pursuing entertainment. Were they always supportive of it? Was that like a moment where they're like, "Oh shoot, I'm seeing you on your TV"? Not that that was your first time on TV, other spots too. Like what? Yeah, yeah. what is that? My dad was like. my dad was always kind of like cool with it, cool with it in terms of like didn't care one way or the other. Yeah, you know, it was, you know it's your life. You well, know, do what you want. A supportive mom, indifference. Yeah, yeah supportive yeah, yeah, indifference yeah. for sure, which I'll take. Yeah, right. you ain't gotta give me no money, none of that. Just yeah. like you know, let me do me. Yeah. My mom was very adamant of like, yo, what are you doing? You know what I mean? She's mad. Uh -huh. Yeah, and she already uh -huh. got two doctors in the family. Right. Yeah. She was like, yo, I, I need was trying to get third. that hat trick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, like, yeah, I need backup for the backup plan, dog. Like <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm the only one, like, I have uh, four siblings, the only one that's, that's in entertainment. 
Um, so yeah, she was she was always like adamant about like, man, you could do so many things, you're, uh-huh. you're very bright, all this stuff. Um, which I, I respect, you know, I have no issues towards it. Um I mean one thing one thing I do that's like a like a running joke with her. I don't tell her when I'm gonna be on anything. I let her find out <laughs> from like oh that's wild. Either one of my brothers or sisters or an auntie, she'll call me, Gina, why didn't you tell me it was in a movie? I'm like, I don't know, you won't be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you go find out with the general public. Yeah. yeah. Like, You're like, damn, fans out here. Now you <laughs> yeah. now, oh, now you want to see me now that I'm at the top then, to your own it, mother. Yeah, You're yeah, just right. like, <laughs> She's like dead ass trying to get me to uh convince me that the quickest way to kind of get on was to become an entertainment lawyer. <laughs> oh, so really? you become an entertainment lawyer. And then, you know, maybe a, awesome. a Chris Rock. <laughs> Request your services. <laughs> and then you tell him I also. <laughs> here's, here's, she's like, give, and then give him your resume. You're like, that's not. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not, I'm I'm not like, handing bro, Chris Rock my resume. A sheet of jokes. You know? yeah, that's right. crazy. Awesome. Yeah. And also really wholesome. And also, you know, I'm not anywhere nearly as established in uh, entertainment, but it is funny when people outside, like I host one show for Jay Leno at Flappers and they're like, well, you're going to put that at the top of your resume, right? I'm like, yeah, that's how all of this works. Yeah, I'm for sure works, gonna. Yeah. Where, where are you where are you from originally? Uh, Minnesota suburbs of Minneapolis. Minnesota. Yeah, so that's what's dope though about being from like out of uh, town, yeah. out of LA or New York. Like when you go home, like yo, oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. You did that set with Jay Leno, and you right. go out and you, know, you a free beer. You know, I, guess, it, yeah. I guess growing up in LA, a lot of people, it's like it's no right there. Cares. You're like one or two degrees. <laughs> I'm from LA, like bro. Call me when you're. Kevin Hart. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? So, which is dope. Um, yeah, no, so no one cares. Keeps you hungry. <laughs> keeps yeah. you hungry. Yeah, keeps, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, no no one hungry. cares what I've done. So, which is cool too, because, um, you know, I always see myself like doing more. So, yeah. It's kind of weird. I think it's a good balance. I think my temperament is, I'm very grateful of the things that I've like, whatever, get. But, um, I'm also like, I envision myself always doing a lot more. Yeah. So, it kind of keeps me like just, as long as it's healthy, yeah. I, I've engineered. That's, that's huge, I've bro, engineered so many shows in here with famous comedians, and I hear one of the shows is Blocks, and so the, a lot of stuff is already public with Neil Brennan. Yeah, and his show essentially is about uh, your blocks in life, things that you just have to overcome, whatever. And you see some of the biggest names that we all love and know mm-hmm. on the couch, that couch over there, just talking about like things they try to get over, whether it be just. Uh, insecurity still or yeah. like overachieving wanting to overachieve it's like these people that have made me tens of millions of dollars mm-hmm. touring movies or whatever and it's just like that's something that I worry about like damn I hope I never <sighs> I hope I can find happiness in this because we do this to, to be happy yeah you know well we do it because I think yeah no that's that's true I think a, a part of it is like I think a lot of us do it, or I just talk for me personally. I do it because I, I just love laughing. Yeah. You know what I mean, I love yeah. laughing. I love making people laugh. When someone laughs at something I said, something I created out of my silly yeah. brain, yeah, 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 yeah. it's like the greatest compliment. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so when people come up to me after shows, like, yo, man, that was so funny, da da da. Like, to me, that's way bigger than like a movie credit. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. just like, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. something that I came up with, you right. laughed at. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's amazing to me. So, but I also think like in this business is so tough. We can't think of it as like, okay, cool. When I get this, then I'll be happy. I think you'd be, be happy now. Yeah. yeah. You know I mean, that's, that's the key. Nah, that's the key. Be happy now. That way the outcome is always at the very least solid. Yeah. You know Joy's I mean? never waiting for you on the for other sure. side of accomplishment. Everything is just icing. Just yeah. be the, be the cake already. You know what I mean? Like everything is just more icing and more icing and more icing. But it versus does like you know because you'll see you see some artists sometimes they're like oh yeah you know they have that little like yeah, yeah, yeah that energy when I get it then I'll then I'll smile yeah <laughs> it's like bro when you get it you're gonna want something else immediately right so smile now if, if you know what I mean if yeah. you're not happy with five million you're not gonna be happy with ten, 10 million yeah but it has to be feel pretty cool you know I mean I guess you've always kind of been popular Mr Prom King but like that was, that was in, a moment in time in, in, <laughs> but wow. for yeah. real okay but. Uh, and like before we get out of here, it does have to. I guess in staying grounded, does it? I mean, you can flex a little bit too. Like that Al- Abbott Elementary, the the character that they want you to play is a concerned parent, mm-hmm. but also a very attractive person who Principal Ava's like flirting with. So is it kind of hard to be just like, yeah? 
I got booked because I'm hot. Because, you know, it's hard not to like. I grew into my handsomeness. You know what I mean? So I had my years of my big hit years. The beard connected, you know. Yeah, it takes a. I've only been handsome for three years, bro. I should ain't. (laughs) I've only been handsome for three years. I've been handsome for three years. Wild (laughs) statement. That's hilarious. (laughs) Yeah, so you know. It's like I'm cocky, but I'm humble about it. I've only been handsome for three years. If my face start receding, it's a wrap. <laughs> <Receive. Yeah. laughs> the shitty face is crazy. You know what I mean? All right, we got to run. I'm sorry. We got to get Yeah, like, sorry. We got um, other things. Uh, anything else you want to promote, talk about, want us to know? Uh, yeah, just just check me out. On, when is this coming out, I guess? <laughs> Tomorrow, brother. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Check me out on the road. Um, I'll be hitting some dates, you know, in St. Louis, Indianapolis, um, Alameda, and then uh, and then some some shows of board teachers too as well. So all that's going to be my... Link tree in my IG. We'll, we'll link that below, yeah, man. Yeah. Appreciate you, big dog. Not a doubt, man. We had to get a black person. As I said, Sam, I was fighting Sam a lot to have another black. Why did yeah. you do this to me? It was just behind the scenes. He was scenes. like, all right, let's, <laughs> let's start with an alpha. Yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah. Exactly. Now we'll work our way down. Educated. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Did, did he graduate? <laughs> <laughs> and he did high honors from Narbonne High School. Right. <laughs> What a great man. Great black man. You Good know. black man. One of the one of the greatest black men of all time. Tall, dark, handsome. Rate your top ten black men of all time. Go. Um, I would say Jesus Christ. <laughs> number one. Yes. That's funny. That's and a good one. That's a that's a joke for a joke. For a joke. Good job, Sam. Phenomenal. Why why is it a joke? Jesus was black. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. I'm standing ten I'm standing ten toes <laughs> yeah. on that. I love it. We don't even that's funny. And, uh, you know, the rest is... Black man, black man. <laughs> I, I, I see you, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Um, yeah, what a what a great guy. And uh, you should really you should really check. I know he's he's touring right now, coming yeah. to some great Midwest cities. Yeah. So make sure you, uh, you, you tap in. I keep saying tap in. Because you've been hanging around with some brothers. That's what... <laughs> hey, you know what it is. Tap, tap in. in, my boy. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> we, need put that, we need to put that clip of that dude talking about starting a podcast. They're going to tap in. <laughs> They're going to really, really tap in. Uh, all right. Our our final segment that we love to do is Danny's ism. For those of you who yeah. knew, it is Life Lessons with Danny. Danny, spit some spit some wisdom. Like I said, we're shooting a special t- tomorrow. When you listen to this, it would have been last night. And all I'm going to say is just do it. Shout out to Phil Knight. Shout out to Nike. Just do it. Just do the stuff. It's time to do it. It's, it's do it. Just do it season. Get after it. For your boy. Don't, yeah, don't sit around and be like, what if? And that's actually a callback to, uh, I think, our second episode ever with Niles Abstin. Yeah. Part of the reason he got Lil Dicky, a.k.a. Dave Bird, famous rapper and most successful show on FX. The reason Niles got hired by him is because he was in the mix Dave looks him up and sees all this self-produced comedy that he's put out there. And he's like, oh, well, if I'm going to pick, if it's down to two guys, I now have a body of work that I can look at. Yeah. This guy's very funny. And now it led him to, you know, working on a very successful show. And uh, Netflix, all these streaming services, pay your writers more. All right? Yeah, shout out we, to everybody we, striking. Yeah, we support the strike. I'm just trying to strike. Um, strike. Other than that, yeah, we appreciate all you followers. I'm always saying it, but uh, a review. Colleagues. All you colleagues out there are uh, leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you to the people who have goes a long way, and um, the classic like, comment, subscribe. And if you like, if you like uh, video platforms, check us out on YouTube. If you're not mm. looking on YouTube, we look beautiful. Thighs out. Yeah, Danny's got Golden his thighs brown, out. Brown chalk, nice sun kissed from the from the beach yesterday. Stop playing with me, okay? L- look at you with your little unlaced Jordans. Feel yeah. yourself moisturized. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we do. All right, Shade y'all. moisture. <laughs> Brought to you by Shea Butter. (laughs) (laughs) Sponsor. Sponsor. Yeah, that was.